What's up, yo? Welcome back to the channel, Better Call Saul, season four, episode two, and what in the hell? <laughs> yeah. I did not expect Jimmy to react that way in that conversation with Howard. No. That I, I'm gonna need a little bit more explanation as to exactly what's going on, because... Yes. Where the switch got flipped, why it got flipped, what the hell. Yeah, what, what's, what's going on through, like, Jimmy, did he even really say, a, like, much in that episode at all? Not really. It was a, like, he, he, he had very few dialogue lines. And it's like, what is going on in your head, sir? What is, like, I gotta know what, what's, what's going on here. Because he was just completely stone-faced, no emotion, just staring. Like, he didn't even sleep overnight that one time when him and Kim were drinking. No. And even at the... Even at the church for the funeral, he said thank you and stuff to people as they basically gave them his, their but condolences. Like, and... But he didn't set any of that up. He didn't even write the obituary Howard did. Like, and he's then, just, like, completely removed. Yeah, and then in that conversation, Howard reveals that he thinks that Chuck killed himself and it wasn't an accident. And he takes responsibility for it. And Jimmy's like, yeah, cool. Gets up, feeds yeah. his fish, and makes that's some coffee. Your, that's your cross to bear. And, like, his demeanor completely shifted. It was like, what the... F like, whoa, dude. Like, I mean, we mentioned it at the beginning of the premiere episode that I feel like we could start seeing the de deterioration of Jimmy McGill. From, from Jimmy McGill to Saul Goodman. Yeah. It's not all good, man. It's not. But because we saw the shift... When he was trying to get that money, and then Kim got in an accident, and then he shifted again, and then he had that conversation with Chuck, mm -hmm. and then Chuck, Chuck kills himself, and then Howard reveals the information that he has, and then he shifts again. Like, this dude is like a roller coaster. He is. Like, he's like up, then he's down, then he's up, then he's down. It's like, dude, holy shit. Pick a and, spot. Let's yeah. be stationary. I mean, there's a lot of shit going on in his world right now, and... I mean, the fact that he almost, like, in his brain, he probably thought that he almost lost Kim. And now that he's lost his brother, it's a really, it's a really tough spot. I and, feel like he's going to lose Kim because of the look on Kim's face was like, what the fuck are you doing? His defense mechanism when things aren't going his way. He's coping. Yeah. Is horrible. The way he handles these situations, like, he almost lashes out. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you're not five. Like... Be a grown up, be an adult, like act like communicate your feelings. Yeah, like he didn't. I, it's like you got Kim. Like she's an absolute rock star for you. Like talk to her, like share what you're thinking. Just, I just, I mean, like I know, like people deal with grief in every which way. It, the problem is, I I cannot read at all. What is is Jimmy grieving? Does he, like, it, like what is going, like, we have no idea what's going on in his brain. And it feels like it's a dangerous game to try to guess. Yeah. Because he is so all over the map when he's dealing with stuff. I'll feel bad for my comments if it's revealed that it's something else. Right. But I don't think it is. I think, I think he's got negative thoughts in his brain. Probably. And probably not healthy thoughts in terms of where he's going with himself and his personality and his life. But... I'm sure we'll see more of it. I'm sure Kim's going to be like, what the fuck, dude? What is, I hope like... she says something. I hope she doesn't just like let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Oh my God, stop. Don't let it go. Um, yeah, so that storyline is, again, it feels like almost every storyline is super intense and just like... What's Cringe gonna like, to the man. Like, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And like this whole situation with Nacho, he's being... Ugh, when he, Gus. He can't even say his name and I'm like a freak out. Like he was going to have another moment where he had to like... He was going to try to throw the pills into the drain yes. right in front of Gus. And it's like, dude. Like the most simple tasks are like just heightened to the max Absolutely. on this show. Like you can't walk around. You can't drive around. You can't like stand at a... You know, <laughs> a, a bridge and just throw something over. No, nope, Gus. Watched. Gus has Victor trailing him and watching him, and they have a little uh, uh, monitor on the car. Yeah, is it in the gas gas cap? Mm -hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. But I, 
Gus knows exactly what the hell's going on. Totes. He always knows what the hell's going on. So that's going to be really, that's another one of those scenarios. Like, is he going to be like, join us? Or is he going to be like, I got to kill you? Like, what, like I could, I could see both ends of the spectrum playing out. Yeah, don't, oh God. Yeah, like, there, there's like a whole lot of middle ground in terms of the way I think Gus could handle this. I have so much anxiety right now, like, I can't even look at you. <laughs> oh my God. It's, and Mike. It's Let's talk top. about Mike. It's to the top. Well, that too. The, oh, I can't even handle it. How is, how is Gus and Lydia going to react if they find out what Mike's doing? <laughs> They're gonna be like, go home. Yeah. Just what are you doing? Go, go to your home. Like, we'll call you when we need you. Don't sh show up here and tear everything apart and just rip to shreds their process, which is basically what he did. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Yeah. Just, oh. There's there's so much going on. Do you have any thoughts before we jump into it? You just no, get, make the anxiety stop. You just want to get it over with? Please. It's showtime, folks. This Hector. Isn't it that doctor that saved Gus? He's no longer in a coma, but he's unresponsive. His condition is stable, but whether he will wake up, there's no way of knowing. That's unacceptable. He's getting very good care here. Might it be different if he was in the care of some place like Johns Hopkins? Or it could make no difference at all. I can think of no better judgment on this man. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't know if Gus Isn't wants to Isn't what he that? deserves? I decide what he deserves. Oh, shit. No one else. Damn. <gasps> no one else? Does that mean he's gonna do something to Nacho? No. Too bad keeping him alive ends up being your demise. <laughs> Want some fresh OJ? I'm good. I've also got leftover bacon for my breakfast sandwich. That's got definite healing powers. Okay. That He's completely like back to normal. You're up early. Yeah. Did I wake you with the noise? I was getting up. I'm sorry. Like, I've eventually. Got job interviews lined up. Jimmy, you know, you can take some time off. Nobody's going to ding you for not having a steady job right this minute. Why wait? I don't want unemployment hanging. We could use another paycheck. Okay, Jimmy, wait, are you... You're not going to that meeting? No. Nah. If there's anything important, Howard knows how to find me. She is way thrown off by his actions. Yes. Uh, aren't we all? Yeah. Aren't we all? It's like that conversation with Howard, like, triggered something for him to act normal again. Normal? I don't know. Don't tell me no. So give him back that cash. Puedes quedarte con eso. Nadie viene por él. Viejo, ¿y cuándo va a terminar esto para ti? And it's on the top of handle. All right, well, he cares. He know he cares. If he didn't care, he would just go on about his life and not give a shit. But you know that that dad cares a lot. Really? Copy machines. He's good at sales. That's not ironic. I know. It is ironic. And on the left is Ollie, Mr. Neff's aunt and uncle. He started this company almost 50 years ago. Whoa. And we think that other fellow is Frank Corker, one of the early repairmen. Well, they must have relied on him a lot. That's a thermofax. It needed a specially coated paper to get an image off one of those babies. Huh? You know your stuff? Uh, I worked in a mail room, so oh. I talked to a lot of repairmen. <laughs> a lot. That's a 6,500 color copier. That's a war horse. Counterfeiters used it to make phony $5 bills. What? Yeah. That's... That's Why do right? I feel like he's up to no good? I oh, feel like it. You got a lot of hardware over here. Hummels. Yes. Those were Alma's. She loved collecting the little things. Yeah, I knew the lady. Same way. Mr. Neff, this is James McGill. Oh, just Jimmy's fine. Jimmy. I have to say, Jimmy does know his way around a copier. No kidding. 
Ha! It says here, you were a lawyer up until not that long ago. What changed? You know why God made snakes before he made lawyers? He needed the practice. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much the only lawyer joke I know, because all the others are true stories. <laughs> Look, I know you're looking for somebody with sales experience, and being a lawyer, my job was sales. I was selling the judges, I was selling the jury. Sometimes I was selling the clients to take the best deal from a series of bad options, but every hour of every day, I was convincing, persuading, I was selling. You know, we have a lot of high-ticket items, and I clientele primed to say no. Well, my spirit animal is a Gila monster. Once I latch on, I don't let go. <laughs> I like it. We're gonna put our heads together, have a decision in, say, about a week or so. Great. Great. Now then. Thank you very much. Oh, man. Just go. Just keep walking. Don't, no. Don't, 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 don't. Don't! Don't! Maybe we can settle this right now. There's a thing that we all know called opportunity cost. The time you spend looking for someone is time I could be out there working for you. I worked in the mailroom. I know how important the copy machine is. I was clearing paper jams. I was cleaning ink off gears and rollers, trying to figure out where the mystery streaks were coming Those from. Those counterfeiting documents. I'm down on my hands and knees. The copier, it's the beating heart of any business. It goes down, it causes delays, that is lost money, that is frustrated employees. That's a negative work environment. That's a business on life support. You plug one of your new machines into the system, that is a healthy, strong heartbeat. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. That is a successful business, and that's what we're selling. That was pretty strong. That was. Welcome to the team. <laughs> really? No way. Damn right. <laughs> so just like that, huh? Yeah, why wait when we could get you rolling? I just come in and do that little song and dance. I'm in? Yeah, right. That's right. Who are you out of your mind? What is he doing? You don't know me. I just come came in off the no. street. You guys are like a couple dude, of cats. Dude, give me come stop! In a shiny object around you're like, I want that. Yeah. No due diligence, no background check. No, just hire the guy that says them fancy words. I could be a serial killer. I could be a guy who pees oh my in your god. Pot. I could be both. Oh my god. So you're not taking the job? No, I'm not taking the job. Suckers. I feel sorry for you. What the fuck? Oh my god. What in the actual... Does he not? He doesn't respect people who fall for his stick. I mean, that's got to be it, right? That sounded like a good job. Dude, he's on another level right now. Hello. I can't. Papa, look how high I can go. Yeah, that's good. Is that the park? Um... Meet at what time? Yeah, I can be that. You let her know. Uh oh. All right, baby. Time to get you back to your mama. Five more minutes. Oh, honey, come on. Please. Five minutes. It's so damn hard to get the kids off the damn swing. Yes. <laughs> I'm just looking for an explanation. You steal an employee's patch, waltz through my warehouse, interfere with operations, and strong arm my facility manager. I'm on your books as a security consultant. If I show my face in your warehouse, it makes for a better cover story. Doing what you did, the way you did it, raises the threat of exposure. The way I see it, it lowers the threat. Now there's a face to the name that cashes the check. <laughs> Oh. Shit, the What's twins. What's up, fellas? Dr. Desette, this is Dr. Maureen Bruckner. Just arrived this morning. Dr. Bruckner's visiting from Johns Hopkins, and we're asking her to take the lead with some of the more severe cases in the ward. Well, our staff can help with the database whenever you're ready to pull records, but I'm available anytime. We can co-manage care if you like. We can... No, no. He's all yours. <laughs> ah, uh, fuck this! I'm out! Bye! <laughs> I'd feel real comfortable with those two dudes just standing there watching me. Do you want to take this over? <laughs> Please. Thank you. When did they get here? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're still running things. Les pido que le hablen, I thought. 
I love probably that I can see them well. Él puede oírlos. Cuanto más le hablen, más se activará su cerebro para recordar y encontrar caminos para reconectarse. <laughs> Fuck those guys. I mean. <laughs> Shit. Don Hector, todo está bien allá afuera. Todos nuestros hombres se han mantenido ocupados. Así es, Don Hector. Nos mantenemos al corriente del conteo. Todo se ve bien. All right, keep talking. I almost like, what do you want me to say, dude? He's not gonna like fucking wake up just like. <coughs> se ve bien, Don Hector. Muy bien. Los doctores lo van a mejorar. Va a superar esto. Y está más fuerte que nunca. Oh, God. I spoke with your security contractor. I explained the situation again. But he's going to keep doing what he's doing. What he's doing makes no sense. Do his reasons matter? They do if he's unreliable. He is reliable. So I'm just supposed to let him keep stealing my employees' badges. This isn't something I want to spend my time worrying about. Then I suggest you give the man a badge. True that. <laughs> I mean, that would make sense, right? If he's gonna oh, just God, keep doing it. Am I late? Kim, no, right on time. Jimmy's not coming. I'm here on his behalf. Chuck left the house to Rebecca, and as executor, I'll be liquidating the property. It would be the right thing for Jimmy to go through whatever survived and take whatever he wants. That's okay. Jimmy doesn't want any of it. Well, then, as far as Jimmy's concerned, all that's left is for him to sign this agreement letter. Let me guess. Four thousand? Five. It's what you give when you want to cut someone out of a will but not have it contested. Just enough money to show the recipient wasn't forgotten. Chuck also left a substantial endowment for a scholarship for deserving youth. I was hoping Jimmy would agree to serve on the board. I'll let him know. Chuck left Jimmy a personal letter. Oh. Uh oh. I just had to know, what were you thinking when you came to Jimmy on the day of his brother's funeral and laid that shit on him? That Chuck killed himself? What's wrong with you? Whoa. Wow, I didn't, I wasn't I expecting thought... that. I thought I owed it to Jimmy to tell him. Owed it to him? Did you owe it to Rebecca? You tell her your theory? That Chuck intentionally set himself on fire? I thought she was going to give this to Jimmy. Yeah. I guess you just saved that one for Jimmy. No, you did it to make yourself feel better. That, uh, that's not what I was To make yourself feel better by unloading your guilt. Who cares what it does to Jimmy, right? As long as Howard Hamlin is okay. Kim, I, I don't think that's fair. Fair? Let's talk about fair. Hey, let's let Jimmy dig around the fire-damaged wreck where his brother died screaming. And then let's let him pick up a keepsake or two. That is so, so fair. And did I hear you right? You want him to serve on the board of a scholarship committee? A scholarship that Chuck never in a million years would have given to Jimmy. Never. It is just, I mean, oh, what's this too, huh, Howard? What's in this? One last screw you, little brother, from beyond the grave? Am I really supposed to do this? To him? All right, Kim, what can I do to make it better? Just stay away. Wow. She's right, though. I mean, she's right. Right? From her side of things, she's right. I... I couldn't say. I mean, not from where Jimmy stands, but from where Kim sees it. What is he doing? He's gonna work an angle from that copy place. Was that one of his clients? Like his client's kids or something? I, I, That's why he knew to go there? Not available at the moment. Leave a message. I don't know. Hey, it's me. Because it was so the I same doll that... Right. It's a job. Call me. And now he's calling Mike for a job. Yeah. He's slipping into Jimmy again. Yeah, he's gonna steal some shit and try to sell it. Where's the rest? I only see five. Salamangas get six. I'm giving the orders. Take the five, I'll leave with nothing. Oh, shit. Do you want to go? Oh, shit. No, Nacho, come on. 
Do you really want to do this? <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, shit. This shit is going to get real tense. like Nacho struggling. Yeah, he is. Look at him. He's looking at his dude like he's not happy. That's how you do it. We had him pissing in pants. Holy shit. <gasps> Obviously we knew Gus knew. Because he fucking knows everything. Mm -hmm. There was some speculation that he would want to work with Nacho. Nope. It's basically, I own you now. That was crazy right now. That's got to be one of the worst ways ever to die. Fuck. I... That was shocking. That was very... That, I, would that have gone down regardless? Or was it because he was a cocky asshole who wanted six instead of five? I don't fucking know. Damn it. <sighs> that was... Wow. That, that was shock. That was... That was pretty close to friggin' box cutter. That wasn't as violent, obviously. That was but still pretty violent, though. That was really shocking. I mean, that wasn't that violent. No, I mean, but like, he's like thrashing around, fucking like with a bag over was, his head, zip tied around his neck, and then hog tied. I mean, it's not on the level of getting your throat slit open, but no. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But and then, it was and then like you as have shocking. To, like, watch your dude pass away in front of you and then some other dude <laughs> say you're mine now. i know what you did and i'm going to use that to my benefit <sighs> dude don't fuck with gus man do not fuck with gus this dude is a savage and he is so good at this that was crazy. That was, oh my God. This show's so boring. <laughs> I'm obviously being sarcastic. <sighs> wow. I can't. That was, uh, that shit's crazy. That, that, that was a wild ass episode. Yeah. Yeah. That whole situation with Jimmy he clearly handpicked that store so that he could go there to get that figure. Are you? But I don't know about all I, that. I like, don't know. The, the, the fact that he was up at night thinking about it and checked to see what the price was on the internet. Like. But would it was, he have done that before him though? I don't know, but that was just way too convenient. That was just weird. Like the whole, like the moment he walked in there, like my first thought was like, he's up to no good. He's not really well, there for I mean, him. is he going to steal from the old lady or is he going to steal from them? Yeah. He might go back and visit Sandpiper. Like they're probably not even going to let him in there. So no, no he's not going to. I don't think a, she lived at Sandpiper. No, she wasn't. A, oh no. Did she? I she don't remember. She was just a separate. 
Oh, that's what it was. Little old lady. She had her own little place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She wasn't one of the Sandpiper folks. But she, he called Mike. So Mike's going to do whatever the job is. Well, I don't know if he's going to. He's well, busy right now. He's trying to get Mike. He's, he's consulting. He's got pissing terminals Lydia. to go to. <laughs> he's pissing Lydia off is what he's doing. Because he's being, like, proactive and... Go get him. <laughs> he's trying to be legit. Mike wants, like... Mike makes a really good point, though. Like, it does make him more legit. Like, there's this guy on the books. He's a he's security like, oh, yeah, advisor. But, like, if they never see his face, they'd be like, we don't know who the fuck this guy. He's never been here before. But, like, he makes a good point. Like, Mike, when Mike says something, it's likely that he spent a long time thinking about it. True. Because he thinks through every single possible scenario of everything. That's true. And like, that's why he's the best at what he does. That's why he's such a good cleaner, because his attention to detail is like no other. Is he the best there was? The best there is, is. yeah. The best there best ever there. will be. Probably, yeah. I think I think he deserves that for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you want him to stop stealing your employees' badges? Give, Give him, him a, a badge! badge. You want badges, bitch? I give you badges, mother bitches. What movie is that from? You don't need no stinky badges. Oh. So yeah, that dude, this this shit. These first two episodes have been cranked up on to another notch. This show is the stress level is high. Yeah, everything because everybody that we're dealing with in this show is really dangerous, and it's like if you piss them off, something bad's gonna happen. And the way Kim lashed out at Howard, I was really not expecting that. No, but from her perspective, this is all the stuff that she is seeing. So from her perspective, she's right. That was fucked up for him to do. Come into the house and be like, I'm guilty. Let me unload all of my guilt onto you who's grieving the loss of your brother. Yeah. From Jimmy's perspective, fucking Jimmy, dude. All this shit leads back to you. Like another person that we know. I mean, whose initials are WW. I mean, it's just saying. The on the flip side though, like Chuck was an asshole. Like but he was all he wanted was bad to happen to Jimmy. Like he never was going to take care of him. He was never going to do what he needed to do as a big bro. For a little bro who was trying to... Th like, we heard his credentials. Chuck was like a fucking genius. And amazing at his job. Because he, he couldn't throw his little brother a bone? No, because Why? Jimmy, Jimmy did it the way that Chuck didn't want him to do it. That, he didn't want him to half-ass it. And Jimmy is a half-asser. Mm, half-asser is the wrong word. Jimmy is a half-measure. Because <laughs> <laughs> he busts his ass to do what he needs to do. I don't know if he half asked. I don't think that's the right. No, way. Chuck just didn't like the way you went about life, and so that Chuck was jealous of Jimmy. I agree that like that like Jimmy got like stuff like easy, like everybody like you know. But also not easy. The fact that he worked himself through law school while working in the mailroom, it's nothing easy about that. But it wasn't what Chuck would consider a legitimate university. Well, Chuck doesn't get to make that decision. I agree. So, but like I. I don't I, even... I'm not. I'm not on like opposing sides here. I'm just giving different. Well, you're perspective. putting all the blame on Jimmy. I don't think he deserves all the blame. He he does deserve a lot if, of it. If if Chuck was more welcoming and more endearing to his brother, more accepting, he really. would have never had to go to the insurance and screw him over. He would have never had to go through that whole hearing no, to agree. defend himself. I agree. Under those, like every every one of Jimmy's actions, regardless of how bad they were towards Chuck, I feel like was a result of the lack of empathy from Chuck. Okay. And all Jimmy wanted was and look, Jimmy has to be held accountable as well because he that's did a lot what, of really that's what horrible I'm shit. To get you to say. Like he shat through a sunroof. Like come on, like who does such a thing? But like. It, the, it goes... <laughs> I just like the term shat. Yeah, I mean, you know. But, like, you go back to, like, him and Kim's relationship. Like, Kim, Kim sees... It's almost like what he's getting from Kim is what he wanted from Chuck. That makes sense. Like, Kim sees his flaws 
but accepts accepts him for who accepts him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Accepts him for who he is. Chuck was never to ex was able to accept him for who he was and only saw his flaws. I agree. I agree. So it, it it's really both their faults. Yep. Because two wrongs don't make a right. True too. So the fact that your older brother is a total dickhead doesn't mean you need to go to the insurance firm and get his entire law firm completely screwed with the insurance company. Like what? <laughs> There's your lesson. If you're a brother, don't be a dick. I mean, that's what brothers' jobs are. I mean, there's, I was lucky. My brother was cool. But most big brothers are supposed to be assholes. It's their job. I'm like, I have multiple yeah. big brothers. Um, Sometimes they're an asshole. Yeah, I was lucky. My, my brother let me hang out. His friends didn't like it very much, but he, he let me hang. I had a cool older brother. But, yeah, like it, it was. it's like... 15 year old sibling rivalries as grown ups. Yeah. It's like, dude, you both need to just get over it. Unfortunately, Chuck's now fucking dead because Jimmy did take things probably a little too far a in lot retaliation. Too far. He didn't yeah. need to do that. So, but. When you're. He was at the insurance company about his own shit. He didn't need to bring up Chuck's shit. Was he ever really there for his own shit? Yes. Because he didn't want to have, to, he wanted that premium back I because think, he paid that money and he wants the money back. I think it was all a scam. I think he had that in the back of his head the whole time. Oh, well, yeah, that's true too. But oh, I lost my train of thought. I had a really good point to make. Don't you hate it when it just like completely just disappears? Yeah. Does that happen to you? Happens to me all the time. Like I, I had something really good ready for when Nikki like made her point. Poof, gone. Just gone. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, that whole situation is just absolutely insane. And just the way Jimmy's acting now, the, I, I don't I don't know where he's going to go from here. I don't know where he goes from here. I, I, does he get a job? Does he become I don't feel like all I, I don't feel like any of those job interviews were act like maybe this i feel like they're all strategic like he was he wasn't circling them on the newspaper because they sounded like good jobs they he was circling them because they were good jobs good slipping oh, jimmy think, jobs oh no i don't, I don't know. know i don't i'm not like after seeing that scene i'm not buying the fact that he's actually looking for work i feel like he's looking for work <laughs> Well, I if think you know that I mean. maybe, um, I don't know. I think he's looking for a job, like an actual I job. I think he's looking for, you want to talk about him doing things, trying to do things the easy way? He's not getting a salesman job. He's going to try to find a way to blackmail somebody and rob them or something like that. I feel like that's where we are now. I, I, I don't know. I feel like he could have done really well at that job. Probably. I mean, he got the job on... On the no spot. one gets hired like that. That never happens. It doesn't work. And the fact that he was able to pull that off was like, you guys are idiots. You don't even know me. <laughs> I could be a psycho serial killer. Oh, man. But this show, off to an absolute bang and start. This is really good. I'm hooked. I, it feels like they've turned it up a notch from even last season. Totally. Which was insane. Yep. So, any other thoughts? Nope. All right, y'all. Leave your comments down below. Let us know what you thought of that episode. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we will catch y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.